Okay, guys, so we're going to talk about how the revenue share works at eXp and just kind of some of the stuff on the back end. Um, if you just go in Google and type in eXp revenue share explain, there's a ton of websites out there because there's a lot of agents who have created these websites with a lot of information because they're using this as ways to attract agents to their, to their group and their downline. Um, but like this one right here, building, buildingbetteragents.com is a good one has a lot of links and stuff. And he basically just kind of gives you a breakdown of how the revenue share works. So first of all, who can tell me what revenue share is? The, well, the share of the overall revenue that's made on a specific transaction, but um, it's the revenue part of EXP rather than kind of your overall profit. Exactly, exactly. So what, what eXp is doing is the money that eXp makes off every deal, that cap that you pay into eXp, they share that with seven levels, whoever recruited basically. So if I brought you on directly, I'm your, down, your upline. There's six more uplines above me that make up that seven. Every time a deal closes and eXp takes that percentage for their cap, the seven people above you get a little piece of that, right? So if you just come onto eXp as a solo agent, you're not on a team, the cap is 16,000 a year. So you pay eXp 16,000 a year, that's being divvied up between uh, the seven levels above you. So as you close deals, as you pay into that cap, that gets spread to the people above you. Now, when you're on a team, that cap is cut in half because they know that you also are paying uh, a percentage of your commission to your team leader, right? So like with us, we're on a half cap. So that's an $8,000 cap. So eXp makes, takes 8,000 from the transaction for the year. So that 8,000 is being, is being divvied up, up the ladder. Now there's something called a mega team, which we may qualify for probably by next year. And I think it's like, once you do like over 150 transactions or something like that, if you're a big producing team that's doing like uh, hundreds of deals, um, we can try to apply for a mega team and they'll, they'll do a quarter cap. So now it goes down to 4,000. So that means EXP will only take 4,000 off the top. Um, and then that gets divvied up the ladder. Now there's pros and cons to that, right? Because if everyone's on a $4,000 cap, that means you're making less of a revenue share um, from the people under you, but you're also paying a little bit less, right? So it's, it's thinking of the big picture. For me and, and what I envision is growing the organization and I envision each one of you guys starting to recruit over time and build the big downline. So it's better if you're getting a full cap from the people below you because you're gonna make more in the revenue share, right? Or if they're on the team model and like some, something in the middle, it's kind of like a, a happy medium. Um, so it just depends on what the, the big picture is. Yeah, you'll pay less into it on a quarter cap, but then you're gonna make less if people are under you on a quarter cap. You know, so um, I'd rather make more in the long run. So any questions about what the cap is and what revenue share is? Okay, so we understand what that is, okay? Now, how is that paid and how is that calculated and how is that dispersed up the ladder? And that's what we're gonna talk about right now. So every time a deal closes, so how the EXP Re uh, Realty Revenue Share Program works. So. Um, the founders of our brokerage made this program straightforward and easy to understand. If you bring another real estate agent to eXp, you will receive 3.5% of their gross commission. And that's capped off, it's up to their cap. Now that's assuming that they're paying the full 16,000. Um, it has nothing to do with the profitability of the company that month or quarter, your monthly revenue share from EXP is based off 3.5% of that gross commission. In the example below, one of your agents sells a $500,000 home, it generates 15,000 in commission. So 500,000, a 3% commission is 15 grand. 
you will receive 3.5% of the gross, which is 525 bucks. So $15,000 was the gross commission, three and a half percent, you got 525 bucks in revenue share. It's that simple. Um, the wonderful thing about the revenue share program is that you will keep receiving three and a half percent of everything the agent sells until they reach their annual company cap of 16,000 and then it starts all over again. Now, if they're on a half cap, if they're on a team, say for example, they're on our team, that number is cut in half because the cap is in half, right? So the maximum you'll make per year is half of that, but it's still calculated off three and a half percent. There's seven levels or tiers in your EXP Realty revenue share group. The first line or level includes the agents that you've personally attracted to the company. So um, AJ's on this call. So AJ brought in Zihao, Right, so Zihao is AJ's first line, basically. That's someone he directly brought in, that's under him. Um, the second line would consist of agents that your recruits brought to the company and so on and so forth. So like Mitch brought on AJ, AJ is Mitch's first line. Um, AJ brought on Zihao, so that's Mitch's second line. So if you personally introduce five agents to EXP, then you would receive 4% of the commission from the second line. So the more agents that you bring on, you unlock the different levels. So your first level is basically anybody you bring on. Once you have five or more, you unlock level two. Once you have 10 or more, you unlock level three. And you can see this chart right here where you start to unlock the different levels. If you personally bring on 10 agents, so that would be like right here, level three, you would receive two and a half percent of the commission from the third line. So it's basically incentivizing people to continue to recruit. Um, and then as they recruit, you unlock the different levels. Now this chart right here is gonna show, this is based off a full cap. So if someone's paying a 16,000 cap. So if they're on our team, they're gonna be at 8,000. So the total number per year on this right-hand column would be cut in half. But let's say you bring someone on to EXP and they're on their own, they're not on our team, they're just a solo agent, then it would be this number here, All right? So it just depends on where they fit, you know, in the, in the, in the team structure. So let's look at tier one. Um, let's use AJ and Zihao as an example. Um, Zihao basically closes, let's say a, a million dollar deal. Two and a half percent is the commission. That's 25 grand. Three and a half percent of that, right? Your first line is three and a half percent. That's 875 bucks that AJ would make if Zihao was on the full cap. Since Zihao is on the half cap, just divide that number by two. So it's $437. So if Zihao closes a, a million dollar deal, you know, by himself, right? He makes all that commission. Um, AJ would get 440 bucks approximately without doing anything, just for introducing Zihao to the team. Um, and then you start moving down the line. So, so far the one, the person who's like starting to take advantage of this, I would say is Mitch is a good example because Mitch already has several people under him. And some of those people under him have started to bring on other people. Um, and it's going to slowly start building. So if you see here, um, 2,800 is the max you'll make on level one or 1,400 if it's on the half cap. So let's say 1,400 if they're coming on our team. So that's 1,400 bucks a year that you'll make off that agent as they produce just for you introducing them. That doesn't include like if you're splitting deals with them and you're making part of the commission because you guys are doing a collab or anything like that. Um, or if they're in the mentorship program or anything and you're getting, you know, it's a junior senior type of deal. Um, and then in our market, because the price points are so high, pretty much anybody who's producing a handful of deals in a year is going to hit the cap. So you're going to hit that full number um, in throughout the year. Is there any questions on this part right here? 
Enrique, so when the recruiters receive the uh, the bonus after they close, how is the structure in? Is it quarterly or monthly or how is it going? So that's a great question. So it's monthly on the 21st of every month is when they pay out revenue share. So if you close a deal this month, it's gonna be paid out next month on the 21st, right? So it's always paid out the following month because they got to balance their books and all that stuff. Um, and it's paid out every single month. Questions, questions, any other questions? Is um is the revenue share check is that our net profit or does it get split within the team? Like from the from the house. No, that's your net. That goes directly to you. Awesome. Yeah. So anybody you bring on, that goes directly to you. That's your portion for you bringing on that agent. Thanks. Right, so the way that I look at this, guys, is it's another tool in your tool belt, right? Like our bread and butter is selling homes, right? We sell a lot of homes. We're on track for 200 homes this year. Um, that's the bread and butter, right? How many homes, Enrique? 200. 200, all right. 200 units, 200 sites, right? Which is awesome. And that's the bread and butter, right? Is, is you're out selling homes. You know, while you're selling those homes, you're building relationships with people, with agents, you're talking to people, you're submitting multiple offers on different properties. That means you're talking to a lot of agents. Um, and if you're playing the game right, you should be marketing yourself too on social media and you should be broadcasting your success out there. Because the biggest way you're going to recruit agents to EXP is by being successful, by you closing more deals. But there's two, there's two parts of that. There's being successful and there's advertising your success to the public, right? Because if you're closing a bunch of deals, but nobody knows, you're not, you're not leveraging the fact that you're having success, right? But if you're closing a bunch of deals and you're posting all your coming soon, you're just listed, you're just sold, your five-star reviews, you know, your team accolades, you know, all those different things that are that all the great things that we do and you're leveraging that and you're creating video content, you're doing all these things and you're branding yourself as the, the top agent in, in your circle. Naturally, there's going to be people that are attracted to you. You become sticky. That's what we call it. Right. People want to know what you're doing. Right. Yesterday. Um, Aaron. Aaron texted me last night asking me if Zahara's training was, is, was recorded and how she can get access to that because she wanted to study that training because Zahara is goals. That's what she said. <laughs> right? Because someone like Aaron coming in, right, brand new, sees someone successful like Zahara and they're like, dude, I want to I wanna know how she's doing. I want to be like, I want to be like her. Right? There's plenty of agents out there who are not on our team who would love to be like Zahara, love to be like AJ, Brian, Tony, Rob, Blanca, all of you guys, right? But if they don't know what you're doing, that opportunity will never present itself, right? So it's important that you guys think of yourselves not only as high-level agents, but think of yourself as high-level marketers, right? You need to be a marketer of your brand, your image, your company, your team, your success. That's how you attract people, right? Now, can you just cold call and call a bunch of agents? Hey, you want to join EXP? Hey, you want to join EXP? Hey, you want to join EXP? You can, but EXP actually doesn't like doing that because that's how EXP gets a bad name. Then you sound like one of these other pyramid schemes or whatever, right? <laughs> where, they're, where, they're, where they're like following you in, in Target Hey, you want to make some money on the side? You know, like that's not what EXP is all about. EXP is all about attracting agents who are like-minded and collaborating and helping each other grow, right? And the big difference between EXP and other models is that there's an incentive that they've built in with the revenue share that makes you want to help another agent, right? So because Brian brought on Aaron, right? Well, actually, well, that, this is the kick. In this case, Aaron was already at EXP. That's not a good example. Um, but AJ brought on Zhao. I'm going to use that as an example. 
AJ has a vested interest to see Z Hal do great because of a couple things. He's probably going to collab on some deals with him through the mentorship. And the more successful Z Hal becomes, AJ continues to make revenue share from Z Hal. If AJ now shows Z Hal how to go recruit more agents, that furthers AJ's downline and AJ makes more revenue share off of that. Right. So it's an incentive of collaboration because there's a there's a kickback. There's a there's profit being dispersed. Right. Whereas you go to a lot of these other companies, these big companies, and they keep their stuff real nice and tight. Like, yeah, there's some agents that'll help you and they'll give you some tips here and there, but they're not going to sit down with you for an hour and let you pick their brain and give you their whole playbook and show you how they're doing everything. There's very, very, very few agents who will do that just because they don't have time and there's no incentive, right? Like unless you're joining their team or unless you're going to make them money, why am I going to sit down with you and show you how I'm doing everything? Right? So that's why, you know, EXP is disrupting the whole model because they've, they've created these layers that incentivizes agents to help other agents. And there's agents that are making crazy, crazy amounts of passive income from this. Right. So I'm not saying stop what you're doing and become a recruiter. I'm saying become an attractor, right? Continue to produce, but continue to document your success. Continue to be the best agent possible because by you being the best agent possible, you're going to naturally attract people and always let people know that you are hiring, you are building, you are growing your organization forever. Right. At the, end, at the end of everything you put out, there should be a tagline or a call to action. Hey, guys, we're growing our business. We're looking for more partners who want to triple their business this year. Message me if you want to chat, right? If you just add that into every single Facebook post, every Instagram post, every whatever, at the end of every video you do, offering to help. Hey, I'm looking to help agents grow their business and collaborate. Message me. It's so all you got to do. Just add that, right? Like Tony has been posting a lot. So Tony, you got to add that at the end. I'm looking to help other agents grow. And what's going to happen is some are going to be, some are going to, some are just going to look at it and not care. You're going to get those one or two who are like, man, Tony's killing it. I would love to learn from Tony. I'd love to see how, you know, see what he's doing, see what he's up to. And it creates that, it creates that conversation. And, and the great thing is we're all working together on this, right? So there's yeah. times where Tony's hosting a, a, a training, you know, Zahara's hosting a training, Brian. So it's, it's like you bring them in. We already have the system built where they're going to get exposed to it all, right? Yeah. So it's not like you physically have to stop what you're doing and stop selling homes to train these new people. We're going to go in and help with that, right? Yeah. And, that, and that's probably one of the biggest advantages that we have at EXP versus other people who are just kind of solo is that we have a lot of stuff built in already. Like Jason said, where it's not you having to do all the selling, like Jason and I will do the recruiting for you. The systems that we built, the trainings, the structure and all that stuff is going to show the value for you. So Zahara may invite someone to our Wednesday training, but Zahara is out on an appointment and Blanca hosts the training and that agent gets a ton of value and wants to join our team. And now that is Zahara's downline, right? But Blanca is the one who hosted the training and Blanca showcased the value. Zahara made the connection and just brought them into our world, right? And vice versa, right? Blanca may bring someone in. Zahara does a fire buyer consultation training like she did yesterday. And now that agent is like, dude, I got to join these guys, right? So that's where all the leverage amongst, you know, all the, the team that we have is really going to benefit you. Just, just invite people in. That's all you got to do. Be the connector. Don't be the, the recruiter. Just be the connector. Hey, come in, come in on this day, come to our meeting, come to our training, come to our Zillow flex. Every single meeting we have throughout the week is open invite to everybody. Hey, you're curious about Zillow flex on Thursdays. We do a Zillow flex training. Here's the link. And what I did a step further is if you go on my um, Instagram, I have a link on my Instagram that takes you to all our trainings and everything. Um, so that's another thing that you guys can utilize is just by putting all those resources, 
even if it's not, you can put my website on there. You can put everything, all our YouTube videos, like leverage all the stuff that I've built as your own because you're part of this group. Um, and, and it'll do a lot of the, the lifting for you. So you, you don't have to spend your time creating a bunch of stuff. I'm, I'm the one already doing that. Just know how to point people to that, that direction. So when you guys get a chance, go on my Instagram, look at my profile, click on my bio on that little link, and it'll take you, you'll see all the stuff on there. Like the, the video I did with AJ um, documenting his success, it's on there. The links to our Zoom meetings, to our trainings, to our Tuesday meeting, to our Zillow Flex meeting, all of the links are on there. The links to the website I just showed you guys, all that stuff is on there. So you guys just now got to deploy it and put it out there. Any questions quick, so far? Yeah. I have a quick question a little bit off the topic, but I think everything was really informational that you're sharing. Um, are we going to start branding now as EXP or we're still going to continue using PRG? No. So yeah, we're always going to be PRG. So PRG okay. is our brand. So that's never going to go away. That's never going to go away. No. Okay. Got it. Just a question. Yeah. Think of PRG as a team at Keller Williams, right? You got Keller Williams and then you got the PRG team at Keller Williams or the the Zahara Wong group at Keller Williams, right? Um, or whatever, you know, it's, we're a team now within EXP. Now, a step further, right? And this is thinking forward is for you guys, you guys branding yourselves within our team and our group, right? And this is like something that like Brett Jennings' team does, right? Like they have, Side is the parent company, which is equivalent to EXP. And then Brett Jennings group is real estate experts, right? That's his, that's, that would be PRG, right? And then within real estate experts, you have, you know, the NECA group or the Ryan LaRocca group at real estate experts at side, right? So the same thing here, the Tony Vo group at PRG, right? You know, brokered by EXP. Because what, what, what the PRG allows is it allows us to all come together like this and have that team unison, the structure, um, the profile, and basically allows us to put all our resources together, right? And that's the group you're part of. And then within that, you guys start forming your own kind of brand, the Brian, you know, Brian Quintero group or the Brian whatever, you know, whatever you want to call it. You know, so that's that's the next step for a lot of you guys is to start showcasing yourself as the brand within our brand. And that's why we've encouraged you guys to build your own logos, to start, you know, start branding yourself, right? Because at the end of the day, um, PRG, you know, our team and EXP is the platform, right? But you guys are the front, you guys are the face. Each one of you is the face to your own group, to your own clients, to your own friends and family. You guys are the face. Yeah, people want to do business with you. Yeah. It's not PRG, right? They want to do business with Blanca. Even with myself, my clients want to do business with Jason Palomino, but I have you know, the PRG. Yeah. And that's, that's also what makes it attractive to other agents is that we're encouraging you guys to brand yourselves. Like, you know, yeah, is PRG EXP going to be a little logo in the corner or whatever? Yeah, because that's part of the group, right? But the front runner, the front face should be Mitch Del Rosario. It should be Zahara Wong, right? Like that should be the main, the main thing. This is the platform that you're part of. All right, so just think of it, think of it as that. Same thing with like Kenny's team, right? Fast Real Estate, brokered by EXP. And then you have all these agents who are starting to brand themselves within Fast Real Estate. And there's a lot of power in, in you still maintaining the PRG brand because it gives you all this stuff in the back end that you can leverage. Uh, okay, so a couple things I want to go over. The other thing too is the stock, stock options. Who is in the stock program? Rob, are you in the stock program? Zahara, you're in it now? Or are you? Oh, no, I have some from before, but I took myself out. Sorry. Okay. 
So guys, the stock program, I mean, here's the thing. At the end of the day, whether you want to go PR, EXP stock or not, um, you should be investing in something. That's just the bottom line, right? You should be investing in something. You should be taking some of the money that you make, your earned income, and putting it into some sort of investment vehicle, whether it's you in the stock market, whether it's you know an IRA, 401k, or whatever, those, they're all in the stock, right? or purchasing you know investment properties is you got to get your money to work for you because that's how you're going to build wealth that's how you're going to build income down the line it's it's not my plan and hopefully not your plan for you guys to keep selling homes when you're 70 years old no <laughs> right, like, um the stock was really undervalued during covid it went from like 28 to like 55 right now yeah uh, I mean, part of it they did a split too on the stock but another thing too it's we also have always remember the ability to purchase the stock at a discount. So if you feel like you want to invest the stock into something higher and you have an individual brokerage account, you can always take it out because you're buying it at a discount already and invest it into something that you may 100%. have more investments that you want to follow and move move the money that you take out into your individual brokerage account. If you don't want to invest it in, into EXP, at least you're getting your, it already at a discounted price. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, that's what I've done with at least half of mine. Um, I've reinvested probably like four or 5,000 from eXp into my individual brokerage account um, for some stocks that I already have um, shares in. Yeah. And some of you guys are more savvy at that, right? Some of you guys follow the stock market. You follow the freaking Bitcoins and all that stuff. And you guys know how to play with your money a little bit more on like on a, on a daily basis or kind of more of a short-term hustle. But but also here's the thing too, like, unless you're going to really go deep on that, right. And spend a lot of time playing with your money and moving it around. If, if that's not you and you know, that's not you just pick something that's going to be automatic, right? Because slow and steady and consistent is what wins the race, right? Because everyone always says, yeah, at the end of the year, I'm going to put money into my 401k. I'm going to put money into my stock. And what happens? You get busy. You forgot you need the money for something else. You ended up buying something that was more of a liability and it doesn't end up happening, right? The people that build wealth, guys, are the people who consistently put in something little by little, every single month, every month, that thing builds, right? So just know, just be real with yourself, right? If you're that savvy person that's gonna go in there and check that and make moves and all that, like some people are and they're, they're doing well, and there's an advantage if you know what you're doing. But if that's not you and you're just busy and you want to set it and forget it, I would opt into the stock program. I would create a for, uh, an IRA account, whether you do a SEP IRA or a Roth IRA. And I would have that as an automatic payment every single month that you treat like a bill. And little by little, it's building up. I have made more money in my IRA and on EXP stock because I forgot about it. Then all the other times I said I was going to dump a chunk of money into it because I had the money in my bank account. Right. So I made more money in, in our Roth IRA by just doing 400 bucks a month. I think the max you could do is four something a month because there's a cap per year. That's been going for years, a few years back. Um, and I forget because it's just, it's just another bill on our, on our, on our monthly statement. Jason has some going to his. I have something going to mine. I don't even know it's there. And I check it every once in a while. And it's like, oh, shit, it's 30 grand more. Oh, shit, it's 40 grand more. Oh, damn, it's 50 grand more. All right? Um, because my natural tendency is I have so many things going on right now, like with, with you know, all the stuff we have in our business life and all that is like, I'm going to forget if it's up to me to, to cut a check. Um, so you have to do something, guys. That's probably one of the biggest mistakes that I've made in my career early on is by not really taking that serious from the start because you know I've been in this business 18 years now I've made millions of dollars in real estate I do not have millions of dollars in the bank right I mean of course you got to live and you spend money and all that but it's nowhere near like all right should I have half of that in the bank? Should I have a quarter of that? Right? Like if I, if you've made that much money, where did it all go? And you end up just spending it. <laughs> like that's the thing. Right? It, 
Vegas has a lot of my money. <laughs> it's just the bottom line, you know? So if I would have like knew, understood this concept early on and just set it and forget it early on and not touch it 18 years later, I would have had a cool mill, a cool mill in my IRA right now, at least because it compounds, it's building interest, whatever. So it is what it is. We're still young. A lot of you guys, half of the room is young, way younger than me. Half the room is not. <laughs> um, I feel, we feel young. <laughs> Eight so, to ten guy, every 12 year, you're not boy. There you go. So like someone like, who's the youngest in this group? Emmanuel? Emmanuel, how old are you? 22? 23. Oh, 23, bro. Emmanuel has the biggest advantage over all of us in this room because he is 23. So if he just starts right now by putting four or 500 bucks away every single month on auto withdrawal, by the time he's my age, 38, you know how much money he's gonna have in there? I got 15 years on Emmanuel, right? So I don't care what, <laughs> what happened. He could retire at 38 and party. That's what I'm saying, dude. Like that's, it's He'll still be young that's to the party. Plan. That's the plan for sure. But, <laughs> It starts with Emmanuel understanding that he's to set that up right now, right? Because the only thing against us is time. Time. Can't come right? back. The money is going to come and go. You're going to make money. You're going to lose money. You're going to spend money. But the time is something you don't get back, right? So, and the way you make money, it's over time. It's compounding interest, right? That's how you make money and build wealth. It's building something little by little that slowly builds and, and starts working for you. So um, if you don't have an investment account right now, you need to have an investment account. You, if you don't, at the bare minimum, you need to be putting part of your paycheck into EXP because that is kind of like a 401k that you're building up for yourself at the very least, or go open up an IRA or go open up a SEP IRA. Now, what I want to show you guys is we started in, what is it? Uh, February, I think is when we signed up. March is kind of when we officially went exp so has everyone been on the exp dashboard this is the exp dashboard so when you log into the exp dashboard it brings you all these little tabs the two important ones are shareworks by morgan stanley this is what shows your stock my exp is going to show you like your downlines and your revenue share um, so I'm going to pull up my stock account and just show you guys, this is not to brag, not to whatever. This is just to show you, like, I don't know how I have, well, this is Jason and I, right? So we got over a hundred grand Damn. in EXP stock already, right? Um, if you see here, 86 is what we've put in from the 5% of the commission buying it at a 10% discount. 15 grand is what EXP has given me for free based off production, based off recruiting, based off all that stuff, right? And this is only since March. So from March till now, seven months in, that's over a hundred grand already in the, uh, the stock account. Um, and honestly, it's just, I don't even feel it, right? Cause it's just coming off the top. It's going in, it's building. The market's doing what it's doing. It's going up, it's going down, whatever. But I know in time, I believe in the company. I believe in the model. It's going to continue to go up over time and it's going to continue to build. Um, everyone's like, I get, I'm getting hit up by all kinds of people. Oh, you're not, doing, uh, you're not doing Bitcoin. You're not doing this. You're not doing that. You're not doing the Shiba or whatever. Dogecoin. I'm like, bro, honestly, I'm... I know you can make money, but I don't have enough time to really study that and, and learn it to, to, to play like some of these guys are playing. I'd rather just do something where it just comes off the top for me and it's just going in and it's building, right? And this is just the stock. This is not accounting like what we're putting in our IRA and all that stuff, right? So um, Jason and I are both putting away. But I just want to show you guys the power of you being able to just build you know, money 
think about that's in seven months, right? So what's going to happen in seven months from now? That's going to be a 200 plus. What's going to happen another seven months from now? Another, you know, 300 plus, right? And in five years, what's going to happen? That thing's going to be over a mil in five years. You know, all while we're just continuing to sell homes and do what we do. So, um, and, and part of it is because it's, it's doing it for me because I know I'm not disciplined to put that money away on my own. That's probably the biggest reason why, if that's working, is because I set up the account to just take it off the top. Don't think about it, just put it in there. And that's the same way we've set up our IRAs. And that's the same way we've set up even our life insurance, same way we've set up our kids college fund just comes out. It's an expense on our bank statement. Yeah. Kenny fast showed his to me the other day. I think I posted it. He has like, I don't know, almost 400 grand in his stock account. And he's been at EXP for 18 months. Um, so guys like people are, there's guys in our group that have over a mil, a couple mil in their stock account from EXP that have been there for a few years you know, in our uplines. Um, so I'm excited. Like when I see that, it just makes me excited. It just makes me further believe like that we're on the right path and things are working. Um, we just got to take advantage of the tools. Um, the EXP revenue share, I'm going to show that. This is something that's building little by little, you know, so this is what the revenue share looks like. I know Mitch has been looking at this and, and playing around with it because uh, he's starting to get some people under him. But when you go to the revenue share group, you have FLA. So FLA is, that's people that you've recruited directly. So these are your front line, right? So that means, that means I have 18 people under me directly, you know, from the team and from a couple other people that I recruited outside of our team. Out of those eight, the FLA um, basically is your, your, your overall group of, of directs. The FLQA means they're now qualifying agents. So in order for you to start getting paid the full revenue share off of them, they have to at least produce and at least bring in like 5,000 a commission because what EXP doesn't want is you just bring a bunch of agents on and they're not closing anything, right? So for you to unlock these groups, the different levels, they have to at least close a deal or two. So that's why FLA, I have 18 total, but out of those 18, four of them still haven't closed anything. So 14 is actually my FLQA, and that's what unlocks the different tiers. So tier one, tier two, tier three, tier four. So I've already unlocked tier three, I'm working on tier four. So I need one more agent to produce, and it'll unlock tier four. Why is that important? Because as you guys continue to recruit, I'm not going to get revenue share off the fourth level unless I have that fourth level unlocked. So that means I'm losing who would be fourth level. So Mitch is one, AJ, then Z. And then if Z bring Z how brings someone on, that's that'll be fourth level. Right? So if, if I don't have that unlocked and that guy starts producing, I'm not making the revenue share off that guy. So the key here, the ultimate goal to unlock all seven mm -hmm. levels is you need um, 40. If he doesn't reach out to you. I'll so wouldn't Zihao be like a fourth level for you? Fourth tier? Um, so you're yeah, one, no, so AJ's two, that's, that's three. Right now, then oh, go ahead from me. And oh, okay. And for you, he's your second level. Yeah, I missed that. I, I thought it counted <laughs> me as one or you as one. Yeah, no. So it's just whoever you recruit underneath. Yeah. So, got it. so if Zihao brings someone in, they start producing, I'm not getting paid revenue share that portion off of, off of them, unless I get one more agent unlocked on this, this level right here. So the goal is to get to 40. Once you have 40 plus, that means you've unlocked all seven levels and you're making revenue share off all seven, you know, which just comes over time. Um, there's not a lot of agents in EXP who have all 40 unlocked it's like a small percentage but like the ones who are hitting big like the kenny's the freaking dan beer kyle whistles they have all seven levels unlocked 
And then you got right here, the total revenue share group. So I recruited 18 people direct, but there's 34 people total under me because from those 18 I recruited, they recruited, right? So now, you know, little by little, we're starting to see like Mitch bring someone in, you know, AJ brings someone in, another guy that I brought in brings someone in. So slowly that group is starting to build you know, and we're not like, I'm not heavy, heavy recruiting. It's a, a lot of it has just been organic, you know? So little by little, this is going to grow right here. And, you know, if everyone's producing a little bit, there's going to be a significant revenue share there, you know, in time. So I anticipate over the next few years where this is paying a good chunk of money every month. And then you can see, um, so on the right, you can see unpaid revenue share, that's kind of like calculating what's coming up to be paid in November. Um, they'll balance out the books for October and then they'll pay us in November. The last revenue share check I got was 1300. But if I click on this, I can now see who that was from, right? So you can see a little bit. Anna closed the deal, 182 bucks. Diana, 53. Herbin, 167. Like they're all little small little chunks. You know, little. There's one deal with Tyler, 337. Where do you see that? When you click on revenue share on the actual on the right hand column, if you click on the dollar amount, it gives you the breakdown of how they came up with that dollar amount. So my last check. But is that in ShareWorks or where would that be? Yeah, this is in your dashboard. So you go to your dashboard and then you click on my EXP. And then once you get to my EXP, it takes you to this revenue share thing. Now, if you look at periodic overview, right? So we started getting paid in March because we signed up in February. So the first revenue share check came in March and you can see how much I've made in revenue share each month. So in March, it was 1800 bucks. April 4,600, May 2,100, uh, 3,500. This was the biggest month, July, 5,800, uh, 2,800, 1,300. Can I see that again? I, I, I couldn't see it. Let me expand my browser on a dashboard. So Enrique, for for the setup for the for the dashboard and everything, I think I missed this part. Is there yeah. anyone that I can reach out to EXP to get this set up again? I think that I I I re request to reset my password a couple of times. The, the link that is sent out to me will expire. Got it. Um, so yes, yeah, so I'll I'll send you an email right now. Her name is Emma. Um, Emma is our person. Have you tried uh, getting on the EXP world, Tony? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. EXP world too. They say that's faster. I haven't really played around with the EXP world too much. Um, Andrea has used EXP world um, when I was trying, like, she said it's kind of funky but she was able to get some help on like a referral agreement that I had. And she had to like contact, she went into like this, like admin area and they were able to help her out. So Andrea, I know has used EXP world and it helped her get contact faster than like emailing um, the brokers and stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I put that in the chat. Her name's Emily. So Emma is the person who is kind of like the, uh, team onboarding specialist. So anything that has to do with teams, she's the, the person that helps us out. So like if you recruited someone and you're trying to check status of their application or anything like that, she's the one that helps out the team. So she's really good. She responds really fast. Um, I'll put it in Slack and the EXP stuff also. So it's there. Uh, EXP team onboarding contact and if she doesn't if it's not her that deals with that she'll send a message and copy you to the right person like hey can you get this guy's password reset 
for the EXP dashboard. So if you just send her a, a message, she'll take care of you. Hey, can you show me again where that um, the revenue share is? Yeah, so when you open up the, when you log into your dashboard, this is what it looks like, guys. So if you go- My dashboard looks completely different too. Um, you might be under the old one. Let me see. So when I go to EXP dashboard, it's gonna be this exp realty.octa.com. So make sure make sure number one, that's the site you're going to. I'm gonna put that in um, exp, and then you'll put your exp login info. I'm in, I'm in. So that's also I just put that in Slack under the exp channel. So once you log in, it takes you to this page. And then what you'll do is you'll click on my EXP and then that opens up your whole revenue share. It'll say, welcome to my EXP. And then right here on the left, you'll see revenue share. You click on that and it takes you to this page. So my question is, um, it's closed a couple of deals, right? So off it. So my question is, if she's not the first person on the contract, is it not going to be paid out? Do they have to be the first person on the contract? Or is it anything that they closed, even if they're a co-buyer or listing agent? Yeah, the contract has nothing to do with it. If they got paid a commission through EXP, then EXP takes the percentage of the cap. So if it's got a $5,000 check, EXP is going to take 20%. A thousand bucks and pay it towards her cap. A piece of that thousand bucks is going to go to you since she's your downline. Yeah. So yeah, the contract has to do nothing with it. Um, it just has to do with whoever is on the commission, whoever earned the commission on that deal. So like for example, since we have like seniors and juniors, and then sometimes we'll have uh, like I'm not on the contract, right? But I'm on the commission demand, right? So. So that it has nothing to do with the contracts, just whatever's entered in the commission demand. So yeah, you should be able to see it, bro. So I would click on this and then you would be able to see your checks. Now keep in mind though, um, checks are paid out the following month, right? So if that deal closed in, in uh, we're in October, right? So if the deal closed in September, it would have been paid out in October on the 21st is when they pay every month. Anything that closed this month is gonna get paid next month for revenue share. So check this out though. This is, this is another thing I wanted to show you guys real quick and then we'll wrap up. Um, so if I go to periodic overview, it'll show me all the revenue share checks that I've made. But this month where I made the biggest one, 5,000, almost 6,000 um, bucks. If you look here, you can see like this guy right here, Jordan Caballero, he's my level three. Um, I recruited Tony, Tony Russo from Intero. Tony recruited Dimitric. Dimitric recruited Jordan, which is his brother. Um, I helped Tony recruit Dimitric. So I met with Dimitric. I helped Tony. I assisted him in basically securing that recruit because he saw the power and collaboration. Tony has kind of been out of the picture, to be honest, because he's kind of just a solo agent. Dimitric has a, a team. So I've been actually working with him a lot more closely, helping him build his team. Um, and he's starting to recruit a couple agents. So like that month, his brother closed the deal. I got paid 375. That's someone's car payment right there. That's, that's a, you know, um, Tyler, Rob, Itzel, AJ, Luis, Thomas. Those are all smaller ones because on the team, they're at a half cap. But like Herbin had one where I got 350. But look how many times I got paid. All little checks, but look how many times there was a paycheck. Dimitri closed something. I got 114 bucks. Harold, 297. Um, check this one right here. Dimitric sold a home in Eagle Ridge for 1.35. Dimitric's my level two. I got paid almost 1500 bucks on that one. 
that was probably the biggest one. So total 5,500. And then what happens is you see this revenue share adjustment. So what eXp does, and this is why it takes them a month to pay out because they got to balance their books. So what eXp does is they've agreed to pay out 50% of the revenue. So what happens is after they balance the books, let's say they, they still owed a little bit more because not everyone hit their caps or whatever, they're gonna now pay out the rest to equal 50% payout because that's their company policy, that 50% of the revenue goes back to the agents who are building the company. So right here, they made an adjustment and added another 315 bucks to, it's called the true up or whatever, to true up that 50% uh, payout that EXP does. So right here was 5,800 bucks in that month you know, probably at least two or 3,000 came from that other team that I brought on. So guys, I mean, it's, I'm showing you these numbers and stuff and being transparent with you guys, just so you guys can see the power guys of is how it adds up. You know, it's, there's a lot of freaking value in the back end. The more you understand it, you know, and it does take some time. It took me a little bit of time to figure it out and understand it. The more that you can now go and talk about it confidently. Um, but even for now, if you're still learning it, just be the connector. That's all I want you to be. Just be the person that knows where to point people to. Um, you have Zoom masterminds that are going on every Monday with Dan and Kyle. How many of you guys have been on that Monday mastermind with Dan and Kyle? There's about 200 agents on there, right? So in addition to what we're doing at PRG, there's also Dan and Kyle who are doing all kinds of stuff with valuable information. Each one of you should be on that Monday mastermind. It's at night at 10 a.m. There's so much information that's like higher level um, that applies to a lot of you guys as producers. I would highly encourage you to be on there. So every Monday, there's that mastermind where you know, it's just all brainstorming, sharing ideas of what's working, what's not working. Every Thursday at 11, they explain the EXP. It's a 30 minute presentation with Dan and Kyle. They alternate explaining what I just did today, the EXP explanation of EXP. So let's say you have someone that's interested, like, hey, I'm interested. I'd love to learn more. Great. Thursday at 11, here's the Zoom link. Just hop on, 30 minutes. They're going to explain everything that the brokerage is about, the big picture. Um, invite them to our office. You can see what our team is about on the local level, right? And then from there, we could decide, is that a team member or is that just the EXP member or whatever? And go from there. But I guarantee you, if you invite them to our office and you invite them to that EXP Explain and you invite them to the Monday Mastermind, it's they're going to be sold. You know what I mean? Unless they're just completely closed minded, you know, which is, which is going to happen, but they wouldn't have showed up to check it out if they were completely closed minded. Right. So all you got to do is know where to point people. And if you're not sure, just ask me and I'll put it in the EXP stuff. I'll put a schedule in there. Um, I already have it written out. So like, here's what I do also. And then we'll wrap up. What I do is when someone is interested in EXP, I've already created this email template. So check this out. Um, email template, can response, EXP info and masterminds. So I just click it. What happened? Uh, one more time. So it's a template that I send out already. David, good chatting with you. Check out the Monday Mastermind and Thursday EXP presentation. Here's the info and links below. Let me know if you need anything. It tells them the schedule. It tells them the uh, 
you know, to check out the mastermind, tell them to schedule to check out the temp, the Thursday EXP presentation. So I sent this to this guy, David Zaria. Anybody know who David Zaria is? He has a T. I'm trying to, I'm trying to recruit that guy to EXP. He has a team that'll probably do hundred million plus. Um, but it's just stuff like this. I'll copy and paste this into the EXP info. Uh, and then you guys can use it. Just know where to point people. Any questions, guys? I know this is a lot, but I, I want you guys to get a clear understanding of, of what the value is. If, I don't expect you to remember all this on, you know, one presentation or one, you know, Zoom. But as we go, just you got to keep your eyes open and, and know that this is a, a huge tool. If you really take advantage of it, this can really change, change your financial future. It could change the trajectory of your business, all that stuff, if you really take advantage of this. Good. Uh, one thing, I, I know I took my earbuds off. You said earlier, like, if you see that it's, uh, what usually happens is they get, the checks come in, and then it takes like a month or two, right, to see it. Because sometimes I don't even see it. Because I know that um, some of my downline is closed deals like last probably this month and i don't see it anywhere in my uh rev share yeah that's or, same i think it takes like three months no no so the checks are supposed to be paid out the following month so if okay. they if the deal closed this month it's usually supposed to be paid the following month on the 21st okay but it won't okay and it won't show an unpaid then it still takes time yeah because they're still calculating it over that. Uh, okay. So sometimes you'll see unpaid and that number is not accurate. They're still trying to get a tally of it. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So by the 21st of the following month, it should be paid in there. Cool, guys. Um, appreciate your time. Let me know if you need anything. Hopefully you guys got some, you know, some better understanding of, of how it all works. Um, someone just got an appointment. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Good job. Is that Jerry? <laughs> Yeah, it's Jerry. Is that Jerry? Yeah. Jerry. Uh, yeah, Jerry. Yeah. Um, look at this. I oh, heard you there. Oh, oh, hi, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thanks. Good job, Jerry. <laughs> thank you. Get good stuff, Enrique. All right. We'll talk soon, guys. Thank you. Later.